In order to do this story justice, it has to be told in the first person. I was once on a U.S. military ship in the wardroom, which is the officer's lounge, when the operations officer came inside. This guy was the definition of not a morning person. He sits down in front of me, he's barely conscious, and he starts gnawing on his bagel, and I'm sitting with my back to the outboard side of the ship. So that's the outside of the ship behind me, and there's a porthole right next to my head where the sun is coming through, and it's hitting this officer directly on his face. And so the officer's looking up at the sun, he's kind of squinting and blocking the sun from his face, and I'm looking at him expecting him to shift. But instead, this officer slowly reaches for the phone on the wall, he brings it up to his head, and he goes, yeah, bridge, yeah, uh, this is ops, uh, I need you to adjust our path, yeah, one, five, six, yep, yeah, that's about right, okay, all right, all right, bye. After he hangs up with the bridge, I'm watching him and he hasn't moved. He's still just looking at the sunlight blazing in on his face. He's just squinting and looking up at it. And then all of a sudden, this port of sunlight just gradually begins to shift off of him and winds up on the wall right behind him where it stops. By ordering the bridge to change the ship's path just slightly, about 15 degrees, it's enough of a change to reposition the sun from his face. He literally redirected thousands of tons of steel and hundreds of people just because he was too lazy to move left or right. I'm in awe. I can't believe he's just done this. And for a second, I worry that he won't realize how unbelievably brilliant this was. And then as I'm looking at him in between bites, he just looks up at me and smiles and goes back to eating his bagel. In November of 2006, Nintendo came out with a brand new gaming console called the Wii, and it was hugely popular and sold out almost completely right away. By the following January, it was still not on shelves in most places around the world, and so people were going crazy, spending unbelievable sums of money to try to get their hands on the system. A Sacramento, California radio station called KDND got a hold of one of these coveted systems and decided they would give it away during an on-air contest. The contest was going to be called Hold Your Wii for a Wii. And the premise of this contest was simple. The contestants would be given lots of water, and the person who held it the longest, i.e. they didn't urinate, would win the prize. Leading up to this contest, the radio station began promoting it really aggressively on air, and lots of people called in with concerns, saying that drinking too much water can actually be deadly. But the station brushed these concerns off and said they were aware of them, and that all contestants would be signing a waiver, and so ultimately the station was not responsible for what happened to them. On the morning of Friday, January 12th, 18 contestants showed up at the KDND radio station and they signed their waivers, although one of the contestants said the waiver only covered publicity issues, not health and safety concerns. One of the contestants was 28-year-old Jennifer Strange, who was a mother of three, and she was trying to win this Wii for her kid. She, along with the others, after signing their waiver, were ushered into this room where they were handed eight ounce water bottles. Every 15 minutes, they would be expected to finish that water bottle and then refill it and do it every 15 minutes. And if at any point they didn't completely finish their water bottle in time, or if they got up to use the bathroom, they would lose the contest. The contest started at 6.45 a.m. And by 8 a.m., after five bottles had been drank, a number of the contestants began pulling themselves out to use the bathroom. But the radio staff felt like this contest was gonna take a really long time. And so they gave the remaining contestants that included Jennifer a larger bottle of water to drink from. Over the next several hours, all of the contestants, except for Jennifer and one other, had dropped out because it was just too painful. They had to go to the bathroom. Jennifer was heard on air saying it hurt so much, and one of the hosts laughed and said, well, do you need to lay down? And then somebody piped up and said, she can't even walk. And so everybody just kind of laughed and did nothing about it. Around this time, a nurse called into the radio station and very emphatically said what they were doing. This contest was a really bad idea. You're going to get someone killed from water intoxication. Water intoxication is also known as water poisoning. And in a nutshell, what happens is when you drink too much water, the water dilutes your bloodstream, it can cause swelling in your brain, and it can lead to coma and or death. The host, after hearing this concern, turned and yelled to the remaining contestants, hey, is anybody dying out there? And then the host just kind of laughed and hung up on the nurse. A little while later, you can hear one of the hosts on air comment on how Jennifer's belly looked really strange. It had become totally distended and bloated, and they said it looked like she was pregnant. At some point, Jennifer and the other remaining contestant began vomiting, but instead of dropping out, they just continued to drink more water and did not go to the bathroom. 
But finally, it became too much for Jennifer to bear, and she dropped out of the contest and she relieved herself. For coming in second place, she received tickets to a Justin Timberlake concert. On her drive home, Jennifer began experiencing this horrific headache to the point where she was just sobbing uncontrollably. Through tears, she called one of her co-workers and said she just was not going to be able to come into work that day. Her head hurt too much. And so after she hung up, her co-worker she had just spoken to was really concerned about her and called Jennifer's mother to let her know what was going on. And about an hour later, Jennifer's mother headed over to Jennifer's house to check on her, and she found Jennifer dead in her bathroom from water poisoning. The station was ultimately sued by Jennifer's family, and they were ordered to pay over $16 million in damages.